Hello again, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, this is still Tuesday, March the 3rd, and it's 5.27 p.m. Now, um, I, I don't typically share a lot from Dawn's emails. Now and then, a, a new person or one that's not on air real often or maybe just one of the ones that contribute all the time. I'll share. But this is really odd because it's like the Lord is talking to me. And I don't know if any of you are going through this. I have a feeling some are because I have a feeling it's attacks from the enemy. Uh, and I'm surely not the only one under attack in your prayer life, in, in your walk, or you may think that you're not doing good enough, or whatever. So I'm going to share this whole entire letter and see, you'll see how every message that every one of these people received is, is like the Lord put a whole message together through all these different people. It's so strange. So with that said, I'm going to get started. All right, the first one is Small Straws in a Soft Wind by Marsha Burns. She titles all her messages that she gets with that, Small Straws. There will be changes in your rhythm of life. So you must make your relationship with me the most important tempo that you hear and follow. And this goes along with what I got last night. It is time for you to anchor your soul to my spirit and move with the cadence of truth and peace, says the Lord. This will be a time of rapid spiritual growth if that is your heart's desire. It is mine. I have been praying. I mean, it's been like ever since maybe Thanksgiving or maybe before that I've been. It hadn't been just since I moved. That's about when that woman got that dog. My neighbor. See, when I don't get that rest in the afternoon... I just get all out of, out of whack, and I couldn't think straight half the time. People don't understand. But anyway, let me move on. Let me move on. Um, so I, I did the right thing by moving, even though it costed me money and time. Uh, you know, hadn't really been on my best for a while, but it's because of that dog. Okay, so let me, she put a scripture to this. John 3, 8. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Okay. Um... I'm going to move on to the next one. I'm going to skip. To, uh, this one is just a one-liner. Some of his actually sound. I mean, they, he may get these from the Lord. Uh, like somebody said, though, they sometimes sound like a fortune cookie. But. Not really better than that, but I don't I don't want to say anything else because the Lord doesn't give everybody a long message. Some people just get a little one liner, you know. But anyway, um I'm gonna move on to this one from Bev Robinson. Work on getting back into your routine. 
I know routine is usually not as exciting as change, but mastering your routine gets the job done. Don't get weary in well-doing. Keep your mind centered on what I have called you to do. Don't keep looking to someplace else. Be at peace. Then you will be able to see all the opportunities around you. So that she followed that up with Matthew eleven twenty nine through 30. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. So there is a burden to following the Lord. So, boy, I wish I could... I know most most of you are not once saved, always saved. But if they would just read these scriptures and understand that this means there's there's a job to be done, right? And if you ask the Lord, what's my job? I don't have a job, Lord. What do you want me to do? He'll give you one. All right, moving on. And these are all dated March 3rd. Take a firm grip. On my sufficiency in all things. And don't worry. At times. Now here's one. Man I even asked someone to pray for me about this. Because my mind was doing this. At times. Your mind wanders off. Into oblivion. And you quickly forget. About all I have given you. Well I was doing it when I prayed. When I was praying. My mind would be praying and then it's like like there's a little railroad track up in there and part of the train goes off onto another track and I'm thinking of how to rearrange my furniture to make it work better in here while I'm praying to the Lord I mean I was and it was bothering me something terrible so anyway he talks the uh yeah this is Kevin Robinson at times your mind wanders off into oblivion and you quickly forget about all I have given you. You get caught up in your circumstance and lose sight of those things most valuable to you. Retrace your steps and find out where you got off course. There is no need for anxious behavior. Don't fret about any perceived shortcomings or inadequacies. And I've been doing a lot of that. I don't know about you all, but I have. He says, I am sufficiency. The scripture he put with this is 2 Corinthians 3 verses 5 and 6 in the New King James Version. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. That's beautiful. Kevin Robinson. Ne this next one. You. <laughs> this just kills me. Huh? It's like. <laughs> uh, anyway. Let me finish. You have been sidelined for a while. When it comes to the plan I have for you. You have felt useless in my kingdom. I tell you today that you are not useless. There is purpose for you in my kingdom. Now he's talking to more than me, I promise you. He's talking to all of his children. Do not stop looking toward me 
and do not stop pressing into me and the purposes I have for you. Wherever you are and whatever you do, do it with passion and compassion. And the scripture, this is from Jonas Bolin. He used the Amplified on this one, and it's Colossians 3, 23 and 24. Whatever you do, whatever your task may be, work from the soul. That is, put in your very best effort as something done for the Lord and not for men knowing with all certainty that it is from the Lord, not from men, that you will receive the inheritance which is your greatest reward. It is the Lord Christ whom you actually serve. So whatever kind of work you do, we're told in the scriptures, you do it as unto the Lord. That may be this one, but this is the Amplified. Um, the, the, one, the part they add to make it more uh, understandable, they put in brackets, whatever you do, work from the soul, do it, yeah, do it as unto the Lord and not for men. Yeah, I think this is the very same scripture. So whether you're a waitress or whether you're building cars or whether you're sweeping the street with a street sweeper, you do it as if you're doing it for the Lord. Even though you're doing it for the city or for the owner of the restaurant or whatever. Every patron you serve or every street you sweep, you think of it as I'm serving the Lord. So whatever we do, it's as if we're doing it for or to the Lord. If you're a nurse... You got a cranky patient. You don't like to go in there. Do it as if that was the Lord in that bed. You see? So I hope that at least one of those will help you and help you get back on track if you've been sidetracked. I just thought this, this just blew my mind basically because it all just, dealt with every issue I've been going through. So I hope that some of it at least help you. And um, these little, so many of them have been like this, but I haven't shared them. But I just had to share this one because I just thought this is wonderful and it's got to help somebody. Okay, so I'm going to plead the blood of Jesus over this video and over the internet connection and over myself and all of you and all of your devices and your internet connections and with that i'm going to say bye for now i'll talk to you later